Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has sent us for a great objective and purpose in this world. Shaitan nafs is out there to deceive us and divert this insan from his ultimate objective, finding Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, thereby achieving Jannatul Firdaus. Ad-dunya dar liman la dar lahu. This world is a house for a person who has not made it a house. When a person understands his objective and sacrifices, then value will come into that thing which is sacrifice. Whatever a person uses his time, his energy, his wealth, value will come in that. Since effort has not been made on deen and amal, that value has lost the ummah. Like a person who has a body. Ask a person who is blind the value of vision. Ask a person who is deaf the value of hearing. Ask a person who is paralyzed the value of moving the limb. Because we have inherited this body, a person doesn't have value. Likewise, deen as well. One person was walking shoes on his shoulder, bare feet. Somebody told him, why are you not wearing your shoes? He said, I paid for the shoes. I paid for the shoes. So, the feet are free, I can use it as I want to, but the shoes I paid for it, I need to look after it. We sacrifice for dunya, so the things of dunya affect us. If my car gets scratched, it's a scratch on my heart. If Allah's commands are broken in my house, it doesn't affect me. If clothing gets burned in the house, the person who burnt it, we throw a rage at them. That fire affected our hearts. The fire and the burning of Jahannam has that affected us. A glass breaking in the house, what a turmoil, what expressions, what concerns people express, how many people get scolding for one glass, the awamir of Allah are being broken, how much concern do we have? So to be saved from this deception in Doka, we need to start sacrificing for Allah and His Deen. In the olden days when you made an international call, you had to buy a calling card, scratch it, then dial, put a code, long procedure, every second you would count it. Why? Because it was costing me money. Now what Skype and WhatsApp, we don't look at the clock because it's literally free. So the Deen of Allah is dying, Sunnats are leaving, Janazas are leaving our houses, there's no concern because no effort and sacrifice was made for that. So we need to spend time with the ulama, we need to start learning Masail of Deen 24 hours of the day, what's the command of Allah on me? We need to establish Ta'aleem in our houses. This ilm didn't just come like that, a lot of sacrifices were made and the people that made sacrifices knew the value of this Deen. That's why they every minute and every second went in an avenue in in, 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 in ways which we cannot even describe. Haman bin Salama, it is said about him that he used to be busy all the time, narrating a hadith, reading, tasbih, salat, tilawat, amal, and it is said that he passed away while he was in salah. Imam Abu Yusuf rahimullah was a student of Imam Abu Hanifa, never missed dars. They say for 17, some riwayat, 29 years, he never missed dhar prayer with Imam Abu Hanifa, no leaving him except when he was in illness. Even when his son's janazah took place, he was not present, he said, I may regret that my entire life, so I cannot partake of my son's janazah. Lais bin Sa'ad described Imam Dhur, he said, that I seen him sitting after Isha Salat al Hudu, he was discussing a hadith, and he ended at the time of Fajr. Imam Hanifa met Imam Malik after Isha, and the person saying, I exceed him, conclude at the time of Fajr. The majlis dispersed. What pleasure, what enjoyment, what ecstasy they got in discussing a hadith, in speaking about Allah and His Rasul. The entire night would pass. Ahlul Layl fi Laylihim. The people of the night get pleasure in their night. Aladhu min ahli lahwi fi lahwihim. More than the people of negligence get in their disobedience. It is said about the Ustad of uh, Imam Bukhari and Imam Muslim, was a great scholar. It is said about him for 30 years he never used to have time to eat at night. Because he never had time, his sister used to feed him. It is said about Ibn Jarir. His writings total 358,000 pages, which is equivalent to approximately 40 pages every day. 
Once he told the people, I want to write a book on Tariq history. They said, how much? He said, 30,000 pages. They said, who will love to finish such a book? He said, inna lillahi wa inna ilayhi rajiun. People have become so unaspiring. He decided to condense the book and he made it 6,500 pages. He said about Yahya bin Ma'in, that we have not seen somebody who had written so much ahadith. He himself said, I wrote with this very hand one million ahadith. Imam Ibn Jawzi rahimahullah's kitabs total approximately 500. It exceeded 500 kitabs. He had 100,000 students who used to listen to his dars. 20,000 disbelievers accepted Islam on his hands. His grandson says, I remember the end of the life of my grandfather on the mimbar when he was giving a lecture. He said, I wrote with these two fingers of mine 2,000 volumes. Part of his wasiyat was that the um, shavings from the pencil which he used to write should be collected. That was enough to warm the water for his ghusl and they were still left over. So look at their shock, look at their desire, look at their ambition. Abdullah ibn Mubarak, he says, I learned a hadith from 4,000 asatiza and teachers. How much talab of deen did they have? Imam Muhammad bin Hanbal remembered one million ahadith. Asim bin Ali, in his lectures, approximately 120,000 people would sit in his dars. Abu Muslim, when his lectures used to take place, they needed 700 men to relay the lecture. Imam Bukhari, every hadith that he wrote, he read two rakat salah. In Bukhari Sharif, 7,275 ahadith, he selected it from 600,000 ahadith. Imam Muslim, in Muslim Sharif, 12,000 ahadith, he selected it from 300,000. Imam Abu Dawood in Abu Dawood Sharif, 4,800 ahadith, he selected it from 500,000. Adunya mal'una wa mal'unun ma fiha. Everything in this world is cursed. Illa ma kana minha, illa ma bitughya bihi wajhullah. Whatever is for Allah, that is not cursed. It's not part of the curse. Another riwayat, illa amiran bimaruf, aw nahyan al munkar. Except those who enjoin good, forbid evil, and make the dhikr of Allah. Another riwayat, aliman aw muta'aliman. A student of deen, or a alim of deen, desire an exception. So the curse, the la'anat, the badwa of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is on this dunya. We need to see how can I be protected from this badwa in this curse. We have Quran, we have a hadith, we need to follow it. Sirat al-Mustaqim. If we follow it, we're safe. We go off the limits, we endanger and we danger everybody else. A traffic officer pulled an old lady driving on the highway at a very low speed at 25. He stopped and said, oh, ma'am, you are in great danger and you are going to put other travelers on the road at risk as well. So he said, she said, sorry, officer, I'm just following the sign. The sign said 25. He said, that's not the speed limit. That's the name of the highway. Just then, he just looked back at the back seat. He seen people shaking and trembling. Perspiration coming out of their faces. He said, what's wrong with you people? They said, we just came off Highway 220. We just came off Highway 220. So if we don't follow the instructions, we are understanding it wrong. We'll get it wrong forever. We'll get it wrong forever. Then we can't make it right. Because dunya is deceptive. No matter how much we give to dunya, it'll come back to us. One businessman, when his daughter got married, he said, let me go to be, my daughter can benefit, she's, she was the only daughter. So he told the son-in-law, I've got a special prize for you, pal. So he said, I've transferred half the factory, the business, to you. And I've made you the CEO of the company. So the son-in-law said, I hate factories. It's very busy, very noisy. I got a problem with that. So the father-in-law said, no problem. We'll put you in the office. So he said, I hate the office. That's even worse. I don't want to be stuck behind the desk. So the father-in-law became very upset now and I didn't know what to say. He said, I'm giving you half the company for free. I'm giving you management, I'm giving you this position, I give you one. What, what else do you want? He said, you can buy me out. 
you can buy me out. So that's the dunya. Always deceiving. Man habba dunya adara bi akhirat. If you love your dunya, you're gonna definitely harm your akhirat. Wa man ahabba akhiratahu. And if you love akhirat, you love Allah, you love His Rasul, you'll be ready. Adara bi dunya hu. You'll be ready to give preference to dunya. Fa akhiru nabi alislam is telling us. Now give preference ma yabqa that which is permanent to ala ma yafni to that which is temporary with that which is gonna come to an end do not give preference to something which is so short loved and coming to an end otherwise one day sooner or later you'll be surprised you'll think so the scenario outside seems you got a portfolio you got everything under control you got so much offshore accounts everything is under control in in the front it looks like it, but in reality something else. Like I didn't say there was uh, a person traveling on the beetle and the highway. He got stuck. His friend in a Ferrari passed him. He said, "Hey, you know what? What's the problem? No, I got a problem. He said, okay, I'll help you out. I'll tow you." So he started towing him. He said, "You know what? I'm in a Ferrari. You in a beetle. It might get out of hand. I might drive fast. Just honk, hoot." He said, "No problem." So as they were driving on the highway, then somebody else came and he came in a Porsche. So as this person came in a Porsche. Obviously, he made signs and he started driving fast. Now, a person in a Ferrari could not take it, so he started accelerating. As he accelerated, the person behind the beetle started hootering. Slow down, slow down, slow down. Just then he passed two traffic officers. The one traffic officer was looking at the speedometer. He seen over 200. He was shocked. The other traffic officer fell unconscious. Tried to gain reconsciousness. When he consciousness, he said, hey, what happened to you? I know they were driving fast. He said, you didn't see what was happening on the road. He said there was a Porsche and a Ferrari racing. And there was a very old Beetle. There was a very old Beetle. And it was honking to overtake. It was honking to overtake. The officer seen one thing. The reality was something else. We see dunya, but reality is something else. dunya ra'su kulli The root the primary object of dunya is to take you away from Allah and put you, dissolve you in sin. That a person doesn't know he is in sin, eventually he starts enjoying that sin. So dunya draws other sin. When a person gets into it, he draws one sin into another sin. And a person thinks so, that this guna is good, it's nice, I'm enjoying it. But in reality, it's not. One person got a promotion in the company, he got a brand new office. He got into his office, he was marveling, he sent messages to everybody. And he sent pictures, hey, see my new office. Then he heard a knock on the door, so he told the person, wait, he made the office neat. He told him, come in. He took the phone from the desk and made, like he's doing a big deal. Yeah, it's a million dollar deal, and we need to go ahead, but the stock exchange. Then he just put the cell phone on the side and said, excuse me, can I help you? Which department are you from? He said, I'm phone maintenance department. I've come to repair the phone that's in your hand. I've come to repair the phone that's in your hand. So that Doka, Dunya, is deceiving. And Saba understood the Doka and deception of the Dunya. Saba said, what does Abu Bakr once he wanted water? Water, what honey was brought to him. And when it came to his mouth, Baka hatta abka ashabahu wa ma He started crying, he cried so much that the Saba around him started crying. Then he cried again. And Sahaba said, No, we did not know what to do. We were all in tears. He wiped the tears. Sahaba said, Ya Khalifa Rasulullah, ma abkaka. Oh Abu Bakr, what has put you into this worry and anxiety? He said, I was what my beloved Nabi. I seen him pushing something. I seen him pushing something away from him. What is the thing you're pushing away from you? He said, Dunya came to me and it offered itself to me. And I said, no, 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 no. You're not going to get me. Dunya addressed me and he said, if I don't get you, definitely I will get the people after you. Abu Bakr said, فَخَشِيتُ أَن تَكُونَ قَدْ لَهِقَتْنِي فَذَاكَ الَّذِي أَبْكَانِي I think so, this dunya came to me. He's talking about water, plain water with honey. And he's saying, I think so, dunya came to me to trap me. I'm concerned and I cried about that. Ya ajaban, kullal ajab, strange is this man. 
للمتصدق بدار الخلود للمصدق بدار الخلود he believes the day is jannat day is akhirah day is jahannam wa huwa yas'a li dar al ghurur yet he is still striving he is still hungering he is in making effort of this dunya which is a deception you know it's a deception yet you still hungering after it yet you still striving over it and when you only need deen then you use deen when you only feel that there's a necessity or um, uh, things are out of control. Now he turned to Allah. The man went to the bank. He said, I need $2,000. He said, no problem. For three weeks, sure. We'll authorize it. What's the surety? I've got a Rolls Royce. Very signed the paper. Very good signed the paperwork, etc. Three weeks later, he came. He paid the $2,000 in the $10 extra. So the person on the counter said, very strange. Whoever puts a Rolls Royce as surety, he said, I could not find cheaper parking. I could not find cheaper parking for three weeks. So dunya is like that. The bank thought so they benefiting and they taking him for a ride. It was the other way around. It was the other way around. Like this is one elderly lady of 65. She was discharged from a hospital after giving birth. All the family relatives were very shocked, happy. They came to see her. They wanted to see the baby. They waited. Then she said another 20 minutes. Then they waited. Then she said 10 minutes. Then they waited. Now they got frustrated. She said, no, just wait when it cries. They waited. So why should we wait when the baby cries? She said, actually, I don't remember where I put the baby. I don't remember where I put the baby. So dunya is such to give us amnesia. When we think so, we know it and we got it under control. It'll give us such amnesia. We lose our dunya completely. We lost khasirat dunya wal akhirah. What a doka. One wife brought to uh, from expensive cosmetics, she spent five hours applying all the potions and the lotions. She came into her husband and said, Oh, my darling, honestly, tell me how do I look? So the husband said, You know, your skin looks like a tender 21 year old, your hair looks like an 18 year old beauty, and your figure looks like a 23 years. So she said, Oh, darling, I'm, I'm shocked. I'm, I'm, I'm amazed. So he said, actually, I needed to tally all those figures up. I haven't added the figures up. I haven't added the figures up. So she thought so. She was put on a pedestal. Shaitan will put us on a pedestal. The Jal will put us in the pedestal. All the Shayateen will put us on a pedestal. A person will think so he got it under control. But in reality, we've got nothing under control. We actually got nothing under control. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give us the reality of this dunya. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give us the reality of the shortness of this life. The amal for today was to read the dua which Nabi alayhi salam told a sahabi. When he seen him in the masjid, Ya Aba Umama Mali Araka Jalisan fil masjid fi ghayri waqti salat. It's not the time of salat and you're sitting there. He said, Humumun. I've got anxiety, worry, what do you know? And I've got a lot of debt, Ya Rasulullah. So Nabi Ali said, I'll tell you something. Nowadays, everybody's got worry, perplexed, stress, and overwhelmed with problems and debts. Nabi Ali said, your debts will be sorted out and your grief will be removed. So in the morning and evening, and as much as we can say it, Allahumma inni a'udhu bika min al-hammi wal-huzni wa'udhu bika min al-adzi wal-kasli wa'udhu bika min al-jubni wal-bukhli wa'udhu bika min ghalabati dayn wa qahri al-rijal The Sahabi said, I did that فَأَذْهَبُ اللَّهُ هَمِّي وَقَضَى أَنِّي دَيْنِي Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala removed all my grief and made sure all my debts were paid. The amal which we were doing previously was to read Surah Baqarah once at least in the house. If we cannot manage once in the house, at least to show Allah we genuine, let's read the first ruku and the last ruku. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give us the topic of making amal.